Hey, uh, Riggs. I don't know if your name is Jim, JM, JM Riggs. Sorry, I'm getting back to you later. I figured I'd do this on a video. That way I could, um, you know, I just hate typing down all the information, especially with the parameters. I always I want to really kind of touch base with you and kind of give you a, a feel of how to use that tradeometer and how to use the Rockbot um, effectively in the markets like this. So the parameters, the question was, what are the best um, settings for the parameters, the one minute and five minute, because you've been using the default. So when I put it out, um, and I'll bring that up on the screen here, but when I did bring it out, uh, put it out, I did have it just set at default, default levels. And that was pretty much uh, over maybe two years ago. Um, maybe even maybe even more at this point and at that point the market was giving us returns and you know remember when we're looking at a bot like this this is a short-term trading bot you could apply to longer term time frames and wait for those same similar signals but you know I kind of developed it to um, take advantage of divergences and you know uh, just really good divergences and then it went on to understanding all right, that was the main, the main um, concept of it, and then, you know, using the Ninja play to, the Ninja Trader platform to build it on, you know, and I learned about that, and I was able to now say, hey, this could actually take the trades for you, but that's not something I always recommend, um, you know, because mar different market conditions call for different parameters. And that's the whole thing. So the, the default is something that was just went out there. Currently, right now, I'll show you what I'm running on the uh, the bot here all right so I'm gonna walk walk through you this is the one minute rock bot on the MES that runs on the rock bot channel so I've adjusted that and again you could see pretty good entries it's very hard in this environment these market these moves have been you know 40 50 60 point moves so it looks like we're not catching all of it that's why I said these are great indicators identifying the levels but you have to kind of take over almost understand where the trend is, how strong the trend is, if you want to continue to tr try to ride that trend because it's an overbearing trend, up or down. Uh, the chop also is, needs to be contended with. The volatility in this market has given these things much bigger. So when the, the volatility goes up, your, your parameters sh should widen to, to compensate for that. That's a good way of actually remembering it. So as volatility goes up, so, so should you. So right now I'm actually running. Um, I want to. I want to show you the script. What the parameters are. I was running two different scripts. I was running two different buy scripts on here. And the reason I'll, t I'll tell you why I was doing that. I was testing them against each other because I think one has a different slope. When I originally did them, and I wanted to make sure that they were giving me the same um, signals. So let's see here. Let me apply this. And we'll just take a look right now at the the um, one. This is on the one minute time frame. No, don't don't. I don't care that it, this says five minute bot divergence. It's the same script, but it's applied to the five minute, and it's co it's it's labeled for the five minute, so it's easier to read on your on your charts. But you can run that five minute on the one minute chart, and it'll run off the one minute chart. It'll just label it five minute divergences. So I was running both the one minute and five minute, which are the same basically the same code but there is a little there I think there is a um, you know kind of as I tweak this in different versions there's a there's a um, there's a little slope adjustment that kind of keep a trend stronger that I want to you know so one might be a little bit not taking all the higher probability setups and I'm trying to uh, work that out right now so but right now I got the five the Let's take a look. Let's take a look at there. I have it down as 12 ticks, three points, first target. Takes off three contracts. It's always set to five. That's just the, you know, but you, you know, again, that's your contract size, your lot. You can put that down to two, but just remember it has to have, a, it'll have a, if you take it all off at two, then it's all off at two. If you take one off at two, the second one will be its trailing stop. You don't have to put it as, you don't actually have to put it in as take profits number two. You keep those zero, and then it'll just have a trailing stop. And I, that's more recommended. And if you need any more, you know, information on, like, if I'm going too fast for you, definitely I don't mind doing this. Um, so the other, um, so then I have the second profit at 24, 
And this is just giving me bigger moves, bigger moves, uh, you know. And but really, if you know if this triggered me in, I would I would you know manage it. I would probably take profits, depending on how fast the rotation happened on the on the stochastics. If it got above the 80, if it was a if it was a a buy signal, and we got a buy signal here, and we rotated up here was really good. We kind of pulled back though, put in a better divergence, and we rotated right up here to right about the 200 period moving average. I remember seeing this, um, and then I, I said that's your time that you probably could get out and feel real good about that trade. Uh, because you got that overbought level. Um, that's hard to put a parameter on that. It's more of, you know, knowing, having these th three key oscillators working in your favor, understanding them, and understanding that the market is really controlled by algorithms and it's really profiting on the ups and downs and ups and downs. And the timing comes down to, you know, being oversold and overbought and being able to capture a move in between these. And being able to time when's the best time to you know take profits too, not just to get in, but to take profits so you don't have to deal with this pullback. And that's annoying because you're not going to get a perfect fill sometimes. Maybe your fill's here. That happened to me today. I actually got a, a bad fill um, because I wasn't using the bot. Didn't get me in. It just what it did was it just alerted me. I got in. Let me see if. But the bot got in fast and got right out. And I didn't get the goods. Yeah, this was it right here. The bot got in here um, right before the close. It was. Was that where it was? No, that was. That might have been. That wasn't it. This might have been it. Either way, it came back pretty pretty fast. Um, so that's my parameters on that. Let me bring those back up for you. The other thing I just want to kind of point out is, you know, always adjusting your parameters um, based on market conditions. And we know that the one minute time frame is usually takes about five to seven candles um, from overbought to oversold, to oversold, to overbought if we have this nice. And that's what I typically measure out. Five to seven is a good, good, um, you know, opportunity there when you get into an oversold to an overbought level. Sometimes you go f further, but that also we could also high in the 60 period here the 60 stochastics and again if these are terms that you're not caught up on yet um, I'll, I'll, I can expand on this the but yeah it comes down to that point now we realize in this environment a five to seven candle move could be 40 to 50 points where it used to be maybe three or four points it's, it's just it's so of course my parameters are going to I want to try to take advantage of that I, I want to take advantage of that so you could adjust your parameters higher when that volatility in those ranges these candles are much higher the defaults were just defaults in the beginning so you know if you find a good one let me know because <laughs> it's always changing you know and I do a lot of back testing too and um, you know the object here is to identify a good divergence. That's what it's supposed to help you do. Analyze it, see the market conditions around it. Take the trade, especially if it's a really good one. Take profits on your first rotation. It locks in your, you know, now you're ahead of the game. Move your stop up to break even. Let the other, you know, and depending on, you know, your constant analysis of the markets news time you know do you want to continue to let that ride or you could you know tighten the stop and manage the trade and that's how I like to see everyone use this as a tool because um, you gotta you gotta watch it all right hope that helps you and um, sorry I got back to this this got back to you kind of late all right I usually get my emails done on Friday anyway all right take care and I'll talk to you in the room